So we have just landed and uh, super excited. What do you think, Larson? Uh, we're ready. We're ready for an awesome show. We hope Lady Luck is on our side. We'll try. Just checked in, Cosmopolitan, and uh, now it's time for casino. Now, after like, take the luggage to the room and head out and get some dinner. Massive shower with a bathtub in there. Um, a balcony overlooking Las Vegas. Living our jet life. Jet life, jet racing brought us here. This truck has got quite a story past. Uh, it was originally built in like 81, 82 from the McCord family owned a, a company uh, it was called Roy and Dodds out in Montebello, California. They primarily built this truck to, to promote their, their trucking uh, business and their business specialized in body and pain and restoration of frames. Had a lot of big accounts and were well, well recognized in the industry. Dorothy, she was, uh, that's where the Indian tie comes in with, uh, she's Blackfoot Indian, and came up with the concept, and then her, their son, Jess McClure, kind of got the idea, let's, you know, let's throw a jet in this thing, and Dorothy was all over that. So just something really over the top, off the wall to promote their business. The truck kind of went missing for like 25 to 27 years, the family lost track of it. Now third generation, David McClure, found it, purchased it back, hired Kenny Fitcher from zero to 60 to, to do a complete ground up restoration and restore right to its original glory. And here we are, you know, uh, in SEMA 2019, thrilled to be here. And this is really its big, big debut after it being completely rebuilt. Well, you know, I know that we just uh, announced that we're refurbing the Green Mamba and the Shockwave, the original Shockwave. So cool. It's so cool to see that this truck is getting brought back to life and some of the history of jet racing uh, um, is not going to be lost for the next generation. Yeah, no, I, I'm thrilled. I, you know, I, I had a little insider information, <laughs> so I've known about it for a while. So thrilled. I can't think of a better organization to, to accomplish this. You know, I know Doug and Les both are extremely proud. Guys, we're here with John Kosmoski. He is the founder, or the flounder, he says, but he's the founder of uh, House of Color Paint. And it's, uh, he's been talking to me for a couple trade shows now about, uh, he's getting me caught up on chemical engineering is what he's really doing. But John, you know, there is a huge following, of course, here at the SEMA show. But one of the things that we're watching really closely is the introduction of new, of, of skilled trades, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, what do we do with these new kids that are coming into the industry? You know, the, the whole, the auto body industry as a whole, and of course, your passion and custom paints, what advice do you have for these newcomers, and how do they get on the right path, right? Right, I think it all starts with gun handling. You know, learning your equipment, how to keep it clean, how to, how to handle it, how to, how to engineer an object, you know, so that you're putting the paint on evenly. I always tell young painters, if they put a run in something and you want to know the reason for it, get to the nearest mirror. Because the reason for it is looking back at you. You did something wrong. You converged a pass. In other words, you didn't, in your mind's eye, engineer how you were going to paint that object. You have to know the width of the pattern. You have to know your increment of overlap. You have to make sure your gun is adjusted and clean and working the way it should be. But where does it all start? It all starts by making mistakes. We all make mistakes. I don't care how long you've been in the business, you're gonna make mistakes. Don't let that stop you. You have to have a passion for quality. And once you learn to produce something and paint something that turns out beautiful, it'll swell your chest because you'll say, my God, I did that. You know, so I mean, the idea to keep working towards perfection. We all know there is no true perfection, but there are degrees towards perfection, and you always want to work towards that. But I mean, to complete a whole paint job, where does it begin? At the foundation. 
if you're not putting the right primer on, if you're not preparing your substrate properly, nothing you do over the top of it is going to be anything. So, I mean, it sounds complicated, but it's not. If you really put your heart into it and you want to learn it, it starts from the base. You work up, you try not to intermix different companies' products, because that's Russian roulette. You, you, and I've had painters say to me, well, I've done that for years and got away with it. I said, oh, well, you hit a loaded chamber, huh? <laughs> and the thing went off and now the job is bad and you want me to do something about it and I'm sandwiched in the middle with two other gun companies. Sure. I'm not standing behind it. Right. If you want any kind of a warranty or any kind of support from your jobber and your dealer and your paint manufacturers, stick with a system. Sure. You know, we live in a world where, especially this generation that you and I are seeing come up now, we want it today. We want it now. We are connected with cell phones. We are connected through the internet. It's funny because at Larson Motorsports, we build chassis, and I get people all the time that come to me saying, I mean all the time that come to me saying, if I take a weekend off, can you teach me to weld like you guys do at Larson Motorsports? Oh man, I try to tell them, listen, the people that are putting our chassis together, notching, welding, bending material, they've done this sometimes for decades. You have, you know personally, some of the most famous and some of the best automotive artists in the world. It follows your product line. What these guys? We talk to them every every day at these shows that we come to. Tell me about you know they're still making mistakes too. Absolutely. And how long, realistically, if someone really concentrates, if somebody really focuses on the trade, how long before somebody could expect? to be able to take on a, a full car in the automotive refinishes industry? Well, you know, it varies with individuals, but to err is human. I mean, you can expect that there's going to be, when you're trying to hit the high level of perfection, you're going to have more chances for error. But you begin by just the training. You know, you got to start painting. And people say to me, where do I begin? Well, I said, well, a nice place is motorcycle parts because they're complicated. I mean, you got a gas tank that's heavy in the front and narrows down at the bottom, and you see guys going back and forth the whole way. Well, how can you, that's not right. That's going to put more paint at the back of that tank than at the front of that tank. You have to engineer the tank. So what I do is where the tank is wide and it tapers, you do the bottom band, and you go to where the taper is, and you stop at the taper, and then make a line down the taper, and now you've got a top that's tapered like that. You start here, and then you go down, in other words, it's common sense sure. to engineer that object and put the paint on evenly. And, and if you don't adjust your paint gun, and I don't mean by using the fan, because most paint guns you can reduce the material and reduce the fan size by bringing in the material knob. Don't touch the fan. And you want a pattern on a motorcycle for a candy job, I say you want a four inch pattern, four inches from the gun, and you're gonna do a one inch increment. So you're going to move one inch each pass you make. On a car, you got a six inch pattern and you're going to do a two inch increment when you're, when you're spraying the candies. So 50, 50, they always say a 50% pattern overlap, but yes, that works on metallic, that works on primers, it doesn't work on pearls and candies. You have to tighten that increment up or you're going to put stripes in it because every pattern has a bow to it and it's heavy in the middle. So if you're taking too large an increment, you're going to have that stripe coming through uh, that's going to stripe the job. So, I mean, a lot of it is common sense, and a lot of it is by making the mistakes and learning by your rest of the career. Exactly. Right. Guys, I'm at the uh, House of Colors Sherwin-Williams booth with the king of color, John Kosmoski. Thank you, John, oh, good talking for uh, to talking you, to us good today. To you. Yeah. We'll talk to you again and real hey, soon. You young guys, all I want to say to you is, Get out there and give it a go because you'll never get over the pride of doing some quality painting. You look at that job and, and that pride goes on forever, man. You did that and you made that beautiful piece. So give it a go. Get out there and enjoy and, and mix some colors and have some fun. What's up, everybody? I'm your boy Dwayne here from Washington Motorsports. Driving the Dominator Jet Car. Got yeah, my boy Lonnie Spears here from Counts Custom. Hey, way more famous than I am. So I got a question for you. Three words, when you're standing behind that jet car, how'd it make you feel? Totally freaking awesome. Bam! That's what I'm talking about.
Looking forward to come back, coming back this Festival of Fire. Uh, me and Ryan Evans will be there again, and hopefully we'll have good weather because we all know last year we got rained out. Looking forward to seeing y'all. Hey everybody, this is Ryan Evans from Counts Customs. I want to talk to you today about the Sherwin-Williams booth and what they're doing for the artists in the industry. What they've done with their design of this entire booth is they set it up just like a high-end gallery, like museum gallery. They're displaying all the known national, international artists, all of them are my heroes. I know all of them, they're, they're awesome. But the inspiration that they're giving artists to stay in the industry and keep doing what we're doing and push further is unprecedented. I love to see it and I love the, the brands that they have with them and under them are doing the same thing like they always have, but it's nice to keep pushing. The Sherwin-Williams booth this year is, uh, is absolutely screaming, uh, celebrating the painters and the artists and uh, there's a lot of big names, a lot of cool kids in the house and uh, I'm honored to be uh, representing Counts here in the Sherwin-Williams booth. Here it is, uh, we use uh, Matrix again on all the, the start to finish, uh, clears everything, house of color uh, pinstripes, urethane enamels and uh, a new flake coming out that's uh, a champagne color and here it is, pretty simple. If this was like maybe a trunk of a car, a hood of a car, this is something I could incorporate on a car, so it's just a paint job that I put on the car, but I put on the panel for the booth. Come in and I did a pinup girl, sitting on the skulls and got a little fire going on, but it's all it's all done with Matrix Edge. and The, the SEMA show is basically a, a gigantic car show, so I wanted the car theme in here, and so what I did is I'm also a fan of Mustangs, so I, I placed a Mustang out in space almost like a space shuttle. And that was the whole idea, just to give it a little twist and something really different. The scarab right there uh, started it off. I love House of Color paint, so that's where the background came from. And obviously my nickname's Rhino, so married the two together. Vintage and new, I like to bring the old and the new together. So a little bit of color, a little bit of textures, flakes, big flakes, small flakes. The booth design, how it's designed, almost like a giant uh, paint booth. Uh, and, and it lends itself to the, this whole custom industry with the, the House of Color, the, Val, the Valspar, the Matrix, uh, the whole line of Sherwin-Williams paints. But it, what it is is uh, um, a, a whole cross-section of custom painters and what they can do. important thing about all the artists uh, collectively getting together with all this artwork is all these panels that are in the booth, all of them, uh, they're all going to be auctioned off and they're going to benefit this uh, an astounding uh, uh, organization uh, paying for scholarships to send kids to uh, technical schools, trade schools, so that we continue our industry because that's something that all the shops across the U.S. and probably the world on top of that we're all suffering because we don't have enough hands. They're literally not out there anymore. So to continue the industry and send kids to, uh, to schools and trade schools to keep this industry going is extraordinarily important to us. Mm -hmm.